we want to solve this inequality. Now it's uh, it would be easier to do if there was a zero here uh, because then I'd have something divided by something less than zero and uh, we could then determine when that happened by simply saying that these had different signs. So what I'll do is I'll subtract one from both sides. So what I did was I subtracted 1 from both sides, added the fractions while well, I had this thing minus 1. I combined them into a single fraction, which is right here. Now we'll draw a picture. On the picture, there are some significant points, namely x equal to 2, which we cannot allow because that would invo involve dividing by 0. And then you'd have x equal to minus 8. So I need to look at what happens on these intervals here that are determined by these two points. We observe that both factors are positive out here for x to the right of 2. And for x between negative 8 and 2, 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So here we have positive times negative and that's negative, whereas both of the factors are, ne are uh, negative over here to the left of minus 8. So when I multiply them together, I get something positive. Therefore, the solution would be negative 8 less than x less than 2. Now, just for, for instance, suppose instead of uh, strict inequality, I'd had this thing less than or equal to 1. Well, I still couldn't include 2 because it wouldn't even, this would not even be defined. But in that case, I would put negative 8 less than or equal to x. Now here's another one. I want to solve this one. Well, it's the same sort of a problem. There's something that's not 0 here. So I subtract 1 from both sides. Here's the 1, you see. Then we combine these fractions here. And then I might as well multiply by negative 1. And when you multiply an inequality by negative 1, it turns the inequality around. And so here, you have uh, this quotient bigger than 0. Now we're going to discuss factoring more later, but when you look at this here in the denominator, it turns out it's equal to x plus 3 times x plus 1, whereas in the numerator, it's 1 plus this thing squared. So you see the numerator is always positive. And so all I really have to do to solve this problem is to find where both of these are positive or where both are negative. Now, it turns out, by drawing a little picture, both of them are negative if x is less than negative 3. Both are positive if x is bigger than negative 1. So the solution we're after is right here.